So good afternoon, everyone. This is the last study of this camp meeting. It's the 40th presentation um, of this of all the studies. This is the 12th presentation of uh, the line of the judges, and uh, we're going to sum up some things as well. But before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we invite your presence once again as we open your word, as we seek your face, as we seek to understand the truths for this time, that we can reflect Christ's character, that we can be a witness to all nations. We know, Lord, that you are working in the earth in many different hearts all over the world. And we know, Lord, that you have worked upon our hearts. You've been patient our entire lives, calling us and seeking us. And we know, Lord, that we haven't always hearkened. We just ask, Lord, now that we can hearken to you, that we can listen to what you have for us, and that you can encourage each one of us and help us to encourage those around us. We ask for your care and protection for each person. And we know, Lord, your purposes are not our purposes, that you have plans that we know not of. But we just pray, Lord, that we can play the part that you have given us to play, that we can do it faithfully. Be with us now in this study. May your Holy Spirit be here. In the name of Jesus, we pray and ask. Amen. The title of this presentation, An Unfinished Line, uh, addresses the, the line uh, that we have of Samson. That is, we've gone through Samson. And we've gone through some of the lines that we have. We haven't gone through everything. And so we're going to look at some of those lines. Now, we're going to try, try to draw this line out. But it's not just about the line of Samson. This is really about this unfinished line that we are in presently. We are in a time in which we're passing over the ground of fulfilled prophecy. In, in my notes um, relating to the midst of the week, I had a statement, um, which if I can find it here. And I don't... Yes... This was the, the statement from seven manu, 17 manuscript releases, uh, page 1, uh, paragraph 7. I think that's what that is. It's, or it's, it says 1.7. There are those now living who, in studying the prophecies of Daniel and John, received great light from God as they passed over the ground where special prophecies were in process of fulfillment in their order. She goes on, historical events showing the direct fulfillment of prophecy were set before the people. And the prophecy was seen to be a figurative delineation of events leading down to the close of this earth's history. So what is a figurative delineation? So a figurative delineation, delineation means to do what? Yeah, so I just delineated, I drew a line, and I'm going to put some events on that line. And so if I do this, is this a figure? Right? It's a symbol, right? It's symbolic representation of events. And... The Millerites 
saw this as a figurative, excuse me? Somebody made a comment? Does a figure on the line yeah. following each other in order? Yes. So that is Isaiah 28. Line upon line, precept upon precept. A pre precept means to set in order, right? Upon a line, upon a line. So it's precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here and there, from here to here, from this time to that time. So that's what we have been doing. And that's because the prophecies were, they saw that the prophecies were, a delineation of events. And they saw this as they were passing over the ground where these, where special prophecies were in process of fulfillment in their order. What would those special prophecies be? Right? Yeah, these, well, those special prophecies would be the prophecies related to the end of the world, to the Sunday law, Right? In Millerite history, those were the fulfillment of the 2300 days, the 1335, the 2520. Now we know historical events, those are events in history that are showing the direct fulfillment of prophecy. We can put uh, the Lisbon earthquake, we could put the dark day, we can put the falling of the stars, those are historical events. We can put the fall of the Ottoman Empire, both in what happened in 1840, and also what happened in 1921, right? Those are all connected to these prophecies. We can look at events such as uh, Hiroshima, or we could look at the Berlin Wall falling in 1989, or 9-11. All of these events are historical events, and they are we know that the prophecy was seen to be a figurative delineation of events, leading down to the close of this earth's history. And so when we looked at the line of the judges, we made an application because the prophets wrote more for our time than for their own time. Now the history that we've been given is this history from 1989 to the Sunday law. Now what I have here in my notes on an unfinished line is... Uh, this history, 11.9.89, that is the first angel arriving. And we have this period of darkness because this is the time of the end. And this darkness, this has to do with Adventism in its inability to understand the prophecies that even though we had Lewis F. Weir who pointed to this event, not to the date, but to how it would occur even after it occurred, the church is unaware that they're passing over the ground of fulfilled prophecies. People like Jeff Pippinger, myself at the time as well, were aware that this was Daniel 11, verse 40b. Right? We knew Daniel 11, verse 40a, related to 1798. But this was Daniel 11, verse 40b. Now, I did not equate that with a time of the end in our time and a repeat of history. Jeff did. I just knew it was a fulfillment of that verse. Now, we have another way, Mark, in this line of Samson that we've chosen, and that's going to be 9-11. So 9-11-2001, right? Oh, pardon me. I'm, I don't put 9-11. I put 11-9. Because 9-11 and 11-9 are the same way, Mark. Right? We can see that, that this is the same way, Mark. Because Jeff saw here, this is, in Jeff's line, this is the empowerment of the first angel. Right? And this is the arrival of the second angel. But in this line of Samson, we know that the arrival of the second angel, which in, is, in Jeff's is 9-11, that if we zoom in and we understand that we're in a different line, that this 9-11 is 11-9. Right? So these equal each other. 
But we put 11.9 because we understand that really it's at November 9th, 2019 that we are in a line that is a zoom into the second angel arriving in Jeff's line. So that is we're zoomed into this way mark. But it's this way mark here that, that helps us understand that. So that, that date, November 9th, 2019, was meant to connect to this 30 years here, this 10,957 days. And we know that that, that number, uh, it came from uh, Shibboleth, which was the Hebrew number 7641, in the story of Jephthah, which was 3316. And those two together, so if you add them, equals this number. And this number is also the 1331st 1331st prime, which is um, virginity, right? So it's going to be this number. It's also the 200 and, and uh, so anyway, yeah, so we got this here, 1331. And, and then we also have um, the odds that this would occur is 10,957 to 1 because in order to have this number, you have to have 365 and a quarter, that's a year, times 30. And so that's the odds. So the odds are right? That's, that's your odds that this is going to occur, that this number will occur. So that means the odds are to the power of 2. So when your odds are the same number as the number that you're getting, then you have the odds squared, right? So, so this 30 years here, this is the thing that Jeff had not seen, that he's doing this work, and we look at 9-11, and 9-11 is a symbol. It's the arrival of... or. It's the arrival of the second angel, but it's also the empowerment of the first angel, right? So I, I kind of did this wrong. I should have written this up here. So this is the first angel uh, is empowered, right? So 9-11 is the first angel empowered, but it's also the second angel empowered. So this is this way mark. 9-11 and 11-9 are the same way mark. And then we have... Um, when, when we look at this in this story of Samson, this is going to deal with the marriage, right? So I'm going to do it back up here. I'll get rid of this. We'll just do it this way. Um, first angel is empowered, and we're going to say that this is the marriage. Now, so what is the darkness then? Like if we look at this darkness, we know it has to do with Adventism. But it has to do with the covenant, right? A marriage is a covenant. So we know that this movement has come into covenant with, with God, with Christ. Can we accept that? That that's, that that's what the symbol is. And, then, and that, that's the story in uh, chapter 14, right? You're going to have this marriage. And there's lots of things in that, but we know there's also going to be July 18, 2020. I'll just do it like this. Right? So July 18, 2020, and this I put as empowered. I meant formalized. So that's formalized, and this is empowered. 
right? So you've got this 252 days here. So, and when we look at 18720, one of the things we know about that is if I take 18 times 7 times 20, what do I get? You get 2520, right? This is one of the early things that we saw about July 18, 2020, is it, it gives us this symbol of the 2520, which is how often people recognize our movement. And then we have the 300 foxes in the story of Samson. So what are the 300 foxes? So, um, and I, did I do this right? We get the riddle here. And the riddle, the way that we understand this riddle is, this is Colin's study, right? But it's, it's also going to be related to that 30, 30, 30. Whoops. Right? The 30 uh, groomsmen with the 30 changes of garment and the 30 Philistines that have to be killed for them to get those changes of garment. And, and yet that riddle is also going to relate to you know, if we were to zoom into this, we would see the history dealing with uh, call and study and so forth. But here it's just placed there. We're going to put this riddle here. And then the 300 foxes were going to relate to December 25th. So I'll do this again. Uh, I'll do it like this. December 25th, 2021. This is going to be the second angel arrive. So in this movement... God is, is trying to enter into covenant with his people. Now, the 300 foxes, what was there about the 300 foxes? We, did, we didn't get time to go into detail regarding it. But he's going to take these foxes, right, because he's upset that his wife has been given to someone else. And he's going to take 300 foxes, tie them tail to tail, so that means there's going to be 150 pairs, right? And he's going to light their tails on fire with, put a torch, tie a torch to the tails. Now, exactly how that happens, I have a hard time visualizing how that would look and also how he would do it. I mean, it seems like um, a sort of a strange task. First, he has to catch, he has to find 300 foxes. He's got to catch them. Uh, they're not easy animals to catch. Um, and uh, he's going to then tie them tail to tail. Now, these foxes, uh, they represent false prophets, right? So in some of the lines, when we're looking at those lines in the story of Samson, we're, we're taking that 300 foxes because it's a figurative depiction of an event, but it can, figures can have more than one meaning. That is, a symbol can be applied at different places in different times. But in this line, when we look at the overall line of Samson, we're going to see these 300 foxes. And the, and, and the tails also, because we have Herod, he's a fox. And then the prophet that tells us lies, he is the tail. right? So we have the tails as well. So there's lots of symbols there that would attach us to uh, this message, but we also have the 300, which we connect with Gideon, which we connect with Noah. So we're just saying here at this time, a message comes, but it's a message that we have to sort out. We have to separate the precious from the vile. We have the influence of the Protestant understanding of prophecy that we have been unaware of. That is, we are not aware in this movement of how we are breaking Miller's rules. We're not aware of our own mistakes. And so when we get to December 25th, 2021, and we have this message of, of the Trump prediction, we'll call it that. It's dealing with Trump being reelected. Um, we could say it's Revelation 17. That we have mixed in with our understanding things that we're not aware of. So if somebody says... Well, I think I don't see any problem with, with the conclusions that Colin has drawn. 
I would say, well, that's just because you're not aware. Like you may feel that you're doing the right thing, but we haven't figured out yet what it is we're doing wrong. And we should know that we're doing something wrong because we've made predictions. Colin has made a prediction that hasn't occurred. So I'm just saying that we could put this here. Now, I'm not saying this line is correct either, that maybe it could be done differently. But I'm just taking these stories of Sansom, laying them on a line, and then uh, placing dates there. Now, we have the next waymark is that I, that I placed on here. I, don't, I didn't put a date for it. It's just the 1,000 men. So what is the 1,000 men he's going to kill? They're going to be Philistines. And he's going to use a jawbone of an ass. Right? So this jawbone of an ass is symbolizing what? Okay, now now it's a jawbone. So what's a jawbone? But it speaks, right? Is this anything to do with the prophecy of Balaam? Okay, so we know that that we have the ass that speaks, right? Now this is a jawbone of an ass, so it's a part of the animal that speaks. And we know we have that in the story of Balaam. And we, in the story of Balaam, we have the three strikes, right? The wall. And we, and we haven't gone into that study here. It's a study that Jeff... Uh, it was really developed, I think, in the end of 2015. It was in 2015 anyway, whether it's the end or not. And it was studied through 2016 and on. Um, but it came partly as uh, what was discovered at the end of 2014, that there was going to be... Um, this attack on the United States by Islam. That was this idea. And that we were going to somehow predict it, right? So that was in, I think, December of 2014. Jeff was in, uh, I think he was in, I know he was in Wales and he was someplace else in Austria, I think, if, if I remember correctly. And Emiliano had also, at that time, um, was doing stuff, I think, um, I'm just trying to remember. Is that the year before? I can't remember. Anyway, what I do know is that after that split with these different ministries, uh, we get this idea that we're going to make some kind of prediction about an attack on the United States. We didn't know if... We, we definitely weren't thinking that it was the date of the an attack, but eventually that's what came about. But that failed. Um, but if we're dealing with... The 1,000 men, one of the things we did with 10,000 um, was we counted, I believe, with this, or not 10,000, 1,000, is we counted the number of days. And I think it was from November 9th, if I remember correctly. I don't, some of these things I get confused. It might have been the 10,000. But we had something with 1,000. Um, and it gave us the symbol of March 27th, if I could be wrong about that. But we have this jawbone of an ass. It connects us to Balaam's prophecy. Now, I haven't in my, if you have my notes, number 12, an unfinished line, I don't have any date there. Now, I'm also going to have uh, this situation with the harlot. So this is the second angel formalized. So I don't know if this is correct or not. And then we're going to have the second angel empowered. And this is going to be the situation with the harlot and Samson. Now, in this story... He's, um, he's with this harlot and um, the people of Gaza are planning to attack Samson. But he gets up in the middle of the night, at midnight, and he takes the gates of the city and he carries them to Hebron. Uh, it, it's a pretty interesting story. That's a long distance. Now, I know a guy who carried a... 400 pound cast iron uh, stove a mile across a field. He was the strong man in the area where I lived for a while in Warburg. 
Um, and he's sort of legendary of all his feats of strength. I don't know if they've exaggerated them with the years, but he told me he did. He said, yeah, I, I had to carry this cast iron stove, and so I just picked it up, and I went a mile and got it to where I wanted to go. I know my son Matt picked up a, a cast iron desk and carried it into the house himself, and I couldn't actually even lift it off the floor, like even to lift the one end, but my son Matt did that. There's some people that are really strong. So I guess they could do it. I know I lifted a 600-pound uh, box of glass and carried it up some stairs uh, because the guy who delivered the glass when I had an art gallery uh, wouldn't bring it into the store. And, but after I had lifted it up the stairs and put it in the store, I couldn't actually pick it up. Of course, I was weak, and I, I was mostly probably adrenaline that made me do that. So, so for him to take these gates, and, it's, and a gates, the idea of a gate is he's going to have the posts. So you've got the posts, and you have this gate, Right? It's kind of like a two-leaved gate, a door. There's two leaves. And it represents a chiasm, right? And it's also, you got the hinges then, right? You got the turning points. So I'm not sure what this really symbolizes. We could put this in different places in different lines because it's a figure. It's a symbol of something. It's a symbol of this chiasm. And it's going to be set upon Mount Hebron, which... Uh, is a place that is related to the to the Hebrews, um, but it's it's south of Jerusalem. I'm not sure how far, but it's it's quite a ways from Gaza. And, and we figured it out. I can't remember uh, the miles, how far it was. Now this one also is in chapter 16, verse one, and 16, verse one talks about the this is the wave offering, right? This is the 16th day of the first month, and so. We had dealt with that. We had counted out, and Stephen did that for us, where we counted from the first time that they're going to have the wave offering is going to be 40 years less a month from when the manna fell, right? So the manna is going to fall on the 16th day of the second month. It's going to be a Sunday, and 2000. And 84 weeks later, or 494 months, or 40 years less a month, or 14,588 cardinal days from that one date to the next, they're, gonna not, they're not going to have manna. If they go out to get the manna on the 16th day of the first month, after they have crossed the River Jordan into the Promised Land, that's the first time there's going to be no manna since it began to fell, fall. When, when it would normally fall, because it doesn't fall on the Sabbath, but that's the first time when it's supposed to fall and it doesn't fall, right? So the manna uh, stops. It's the ceasing of the manna. And so we know that that story relates to uh, the wave offering. And we know also in chapter 15, the previous chapter to chapter 16, is going to be in the time of the wheat harvest, and it's going to be Passover, Right? And Passover is going to be 49 days after. And so we had connected uh, these symbols with, um, we, we had connected them with um, Colin and Odilio's presentations that were 49 days apart. So exactly how we would represent these on these, these lines, I don't know. So we could say, well, the 16th day of the first month we had as um, uh, dealing with Colin's prediction because that's the wave offering and that's going to be December 25th, 2021. But on this line, I'm just taking the stories and laying them out and then giving us a line. And then we have Samson and Delilah. Now, Samson and Delilah is the, ri r r the arrival of the third angel. And we did that line... And we could see that that line, uh, we, we did a bit of it, right? We could see that that line uh, relates to, to what? What is the line of Samson and Delilah about? 
to remember. The way that we, we did it two different ways. So we did one line, which is just, we called the line of Samson and Delilah. But that line, it relates to first Colin and Odilio's and my presentations. So December 25th, 2021, February 12th, 2022, and November 24th, 2022, uh, where we have these different symbols. And we also have Stephen's presentation on the same day, or not his presentation, but his discovery on the same day as Colin's. And that's going to actually relate really to this story of chapter 16, uh, where you're going to have uh, this wave offering, right? So it's going to relate to this story of the harlot. But then you're going to have uh, Delilah. The D Delilah story is going to be the second angel arriving. But then we looked in the story of Delilah, we had the three tests plus one, right? So the seven green widths, the new ropes, the seven locks in a loom, and then the fourth when his hair is cut. And that's a repeat of history. It's the fourth angel arriving. It points symbolically to July 18, 2030, 10 years to the day on the Gregorian calendar, which is uh, 1,000... 14,610 days later, because there's, I think that's right. No, that's wrong. I'm doing that wrong. Never mind. Uh, I'm counting that wrong. I'm, anyway, it's going to be uh, 3,652 3, days later, right? 10 years. Okay. I was doing the leap year symbol. Anyway, so we have that on this line. So we have Samson and Delilah. Now this one I put as January 11th, 2023. That, that when we look at that line, Samson and Delilah, in the line of the judges, that's what it is. Now this, so this is the line of Samson. It relates to the line of the judges, but the line of Samson is a zoom into uh, a line on the line of the judges. And then we had this other date, April 5th, 2030. So this April 5th, 2030 is not a prediction for any event. It's the fourth angel arrives. It symbolizes um, something about our lines. It gives us information about our lines. Now, this is just simply Samson's death. So we didn't really go into what Samson does when he dies. But we know this, that this is the Sunday law. Right? When he takes down the temple of Dagon. So the Sunday law is what this movement has been all about. So we have this figurative delineation of events. We're in the midst of fulfilled prophecy. And we don't know if this line really represents exactly how we should draw out Samson. But it is the events in Samson's life, right? Obviously, here, he's going to be born. So it's from his birth to his death. Now, he is a type of Christ. He's a figure. He represents Christ in his humanity. Right? It represents us. Right? Not the U.S., but us. Represents us. Samson represents us because Christ in humanity is Christ in us. And we are sinful. Right? We need to be redeemed. But we have this nature that has controlled us. And Christ is come in the midst of the week to undo the fall of man. He is the second Adam. Adam, Divinity and humanity combined do not commit sin. And we know of God's word, Ellen White says the same thing, that the Bible was written by men in human language. But the words of men become the words of God. And when the words of men become the words of God, 
Are they true? Do the, does the God's word commit sin? Is it in error? No. So even though fallible man has taken the words of God and written them down, they're still the word of God. Humanity and divinity combined do not commit sin. God, in Christ, is seeking to finish this line that we are walking through. We're in a line that leads where? Where does this line lead? Ultimately, it leads to the kingdom of God. It's that path, right? We know that they're walking over the ground of fulfilled prophecy. Right? <clears throat> Those who are now living in who in studying the prophecies of Daniel and John, that's us now, received great light from God as they passed over the ground. Now, she is talking about now living, but she's also talking about her time too. So there are those who in her day were now living and they had studied these prophecies. And they passed over the ground where the special prophecies were in process of fulfillment in their order, right? This was a figurative delineation of events in their order. They go leading to the close of this earth's history. And she says in The Present Truth, November 4th, 1886, paragraphs, paragraph 7. And when the light of the world, the sun of righteousness, had once risen, its illuminating rays were not only reflecting light to the future, but back through preceding generations. Right? The light from the cross of Calvary flashed upon the prophetic past. The past was understood, but that light also shone into the future. Right? There's events. There's ceremonies. There is types. These are luminaries which God had placed in the moral heavens. These luminaries which God had placed in the moral heavens were never more to grow dim, but were to shine with clearer, steadier rays. If we think about the luminaries in the heavens, what are we talking about? The sun, the moon, the stars. These things are the clock that God has given. It's shining clearer and in steadier rays. And this light comes from the cross because when we look at prophecy, Christ in the midst of the week, he is the thing that unlocks all prophecy. Right? He seals up vision and prophecy. That word seal up uh, can mean to close up, but it can also mean uh, to put a stamp of approval because when you seal up something, a document or a law, you seal it, you take the ring and you put it in the wax and that's the seal. I have that on my diploma, right? There's a seal. And so prophecy is sealed by Christ's death upon the cross. And so Samson being a type of Christ, his death here is where we have to die. Can self continue on and us pass this Sunday law test? He can't possibly do so. Now in all of these studies, we have been making an appeal. That is the appeal that we are making is for people to study. We're saying, if you're watching these videos, you need to test the things that we are saying. Are they so? We have no authority over any man. Neither do we want authority over any man. Christ is to be our king. There is no organization that we are going to form other than our personal connection with Christ. And that's not disorganization. We're not going to be like they were in the time of the judges where every man did that which was right in his own eyes. We have a king. Christ is our king. And he gives us the key on how we are to cooperate with him. We are to cooperate with one another. 
And so that's what I'm suggesting that we do. That we take this time to cooperate with one another. To study God's word. I have made many invitations to people to join us in the morning studies, the studies on Friday night, Sabbath morning. And we are planning some changes in our schedule. We didn't actually talk about it here. But there are going to be some changes in what we are doing. One is, I think we need to accommodate the people in Africa, uh, especially on Sabbath. So I've got to figure that out. So I'm going to be doing some emails. But we need to have some messages where people can participate. I know I'm going to be studying with a brother who has a ministry and many people in that ministry in Vietnam. And I'm going to be studying with him, setting aside a time where him and I can personally study. Uh, he has the language barrier. He speaks some English. It's not great, but he can, we can communicate. But he needs to improve his English. He wanted to be here for this camp meeting, but he couldn't get a visa. Um, so... I'm going to be studying with him. There's a lot of work that needs to be done in helping others, in cooperating with others, not from a, a point of authority, of controlling others, but from the point of sharing with one another. And we all need to learn from each other. So we're going to figure some of these things out as time goes on, how we can... Uh, be a part of studies that are in, in Africa, for instance, that, that I can just join in a Zoom study that they're doing and, you know, I'm not leading out, but I'm learning from them because we need to learn from one another. So we have to figure these things out. But we are on this path, upon this line. It's a figurative delineation of events and we're passing over the ground of fulfilled prophecy. So I remember writing the scripture song for Isaiah 58, the first part of Isaiah 58. And then I also wrote for a second part. I'm not going to sing it here. But this was a long, long time ago uh, when I first became an Adventist. So this, this would have been, well, a few years after, about 1985. But the verse here is Isaiah 58, verse 12. And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of many generations. Thou shalt be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of paths to dwell in. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord honorable, and shalt honor him, not doing thine own ways, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words. We are not to trample the Sabbath. And then the promise is, then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. What is the heritage of Jacob? What is, what is another word for heritage? Inheritance, right? So Jacob, he has this inheritance, right? That is the blessing of the firstborn. Now, Jacob, of course, is not the firstborn, but he receives it. Rarely has the firstborn actually received this blessing. And this blessing comes from the promise given in Genesis chapter 3 that the seed of the woman would bruise the serpent's head and the serpent would bruise his heel. And Jacob has that inheritance and he's going to depart, impart it, the kingship to Judah, the priesthood to Levi, and the double portion to Joseph. But we can be fed with this inheritance of Jacob because Jacob, Israel, is our father. We are sons of Abraham. We are sons of Jacob. We are sons of Israel. Right? So we can enter into these promises that God has given in the Old Testament. Many Christians, of course, 
the Sabbath is for the Jews. That's the way I was brought up. My dad said, that's the Jewish Sabbath. But we know that the Sabbath was made for man. And the Sabbath is a sign that we can enter into God's rest. That is, it is God who sanctifies us or makes us holy. It's a sign between us and God. In this covenant relationship, the Sabbath is that sign. So this is the message that God wants us to hear and to live and to give. So I thank everyone for participating in these studies. We need your prayers here. We have many challenges. There are different challenges than you may have, and we'll be praying for you because we know you have challenges. Everyone who has been watching these studies has challenges that they have to face. We need to pray for one another. We need to pray for this movement in North America and around the world. And we know that, that God has a purpose in some way um, for each one of us, and we have to figure that out, what his purpose is, that we can participate with him in this work. And so I thank everyone for being here. It's been a blessing to be able to do these studies. And I pray that you can continue to study and that we can communicate and figure out how we can change these studies that we do on a weekly basis, how we can make them more accessible to everyone. But can you now join me in a word of prayer? Dear gracious Heavenly Father, we are very thankful for all that you have done um, we ask for your angels' care and protection once again for those traveling and for a blessing in their lives that um, the relationships they have in family, in church, in work, and just in our day-to-day -day life, that these relationships uh, can be blessed. We ask for forgiveness for our sins, the time that we have wasted I know I'm getting older and there's so much things I would like to accomplish and, and I had time to accomplish them in the past and I did not. And so I just pray that you can help me um, in my study and the work. But we pray this for everyone because we're all in this same situation. We have squandered the time and we ask that we can redeem it. And we give our lives to you, Lord. We ask that you can use us in whatever way you see fit. We pray that the people around the world that we have not met in person, that one day we can see them in person, if not on this earth, but in your kingdom. So we leave all things in your hands. And we thank you once again. And we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.